the resurgence of Windows laptops is on a full swing now. Now, at least as far as Asus is concerned, it all started with the VivoBook S15 OLED with Snapdragon XL8, which we've already tested on our channel. And if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. A link should pop up right now. And now it continues with this, the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED with AMD's latest generation Ryzen AI 9 HX370 processor. Now, what's the promise that's being made by ASUS and AMD? Superior x86 performance with excellent battery efficiency. So let's test those claims and find out if x86 is actually better than ARM now. Let's take a deeper look at the ZenBook S16 OLED in this video made in collaboration with ASUS. Hi, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. The first thing that caught my attention is that for a 16 inch laptop, this beast is slim and light. So it measures about 1.1 centimeters at its thickest point and it weighs only 1.5 kilograms. Definitely making it best in class when it comes to thinness and lightness. And one of the reasons how Asus has managed to achieve this is by actually using a new material in its construction. So this material is a mix of ceramic and aluminum and it's called said aluminum. I mean, what else would they call it? Anyway, you also get military standard 810H certification, which is pretty good. Moreover, that one finger lid lift test that I really care about, well, passes with flying colors. But I must mention that this time around the screen doesn't go entirely flat, so you don't get a 180 degree flat display. But what you get is about say 130, 135 degrees, which is pretty good too. But what I absolutely love about it is that the lid stays put, even if you're furiously typing at the display, no problem whatsoever. And if you look at this, look at this. This is, this is really good. The hinge is extremely tight and well-constructed, love it. But you know what I love even more? It's the display. This 16 inch display has a resolution of 3K and it's a 120 Hertz refresh rate panel as well. Asus likes to call it Lumina OLED. You get support for 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. You've got support for Dolby Vision and there's Pantone validation as well. So the color accuracy of this display when you want to actually create content is top notch. And this display also has the VESA True HDR 500 certification, which basically means that it can reach a peak brightness of 500 nits when you're playing HDR content, basically Dolby Vision on Netflix. And in high brightness mode, generally when you push the slider, it can reach up to 400 nits of peak brightness. But you know what? The display story doesn't end there. This display has a friggin' touch screen. And genuinely, I did not expect that at all. But this is where I feel that Asus might have missed a trick because a 180 degree flat display on this laptop because of the touchscreen would have actually been useful. And you know what else would be actually helpful if you guys hit the subscribe button? Yeah, go ahead, do that. We're trying to hit a million soon. Now moving on from the display, of course, it's class leading, but you know what's also good? are the speakers. So you've got six built-in down-firing speakers and they've been tuned by Harman Kardon. Now, they get very loud. They actually do sound rich as well, especially in the treble and the mids. It's pretty good. But I feel that the bass extension is a little lacking. It could have had a little bit more oomph, but uh, take a listen to it for yourself and let me know what you guys think. As for the ports, the S16 OLED has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port at the right and you've got an SD card reader as well. And you've got two USB 4.0 Gen 3 Type-C ports on the left, which also supports display out and fast charging. And at the left, you've also got the HDMI 2.1 port and the 3.5mm audio jack. So yeah, the port situation is pretty solid if you ask me. You also get a 1080p webcam and you can use the buttons on the keyboard to switch the webcam or the mic off, which is like a hot switch. So in our testing, we noticed that the white balance was good. You also get decent exposure even in low light so it's nice so if you're taking zoom calls or doing discord watch parties on this laptop it should perform pretty well plus you've also got support for windows hello facial recognition which worked well in our time of testing the device the keyboard on the s16 oled was surprisingly good actually so what i noticed is that it is great to type on and i could get to my normal typing speed really quickly now the key travel could have been slightly better and it could have been less mushier but still i feel that it's pretty clacky enough for a membrane switch and also about the key travel, since this is like a thin and light laptop and it's just 1.1 centimeters thick, maybe there's not enough space for it to have a little more travel. But I still think that ASUS's engineering of the keyboard itself is pretty good. Except for one thing which keeps bothering me is the fact that the arrow keys are so tiny for my pudgy fingers. It's also backlit with your classic white light. You don't get RGB, but I genuinely prefer this over RGB. And you've got three levels of adjustment as well. Now talking about the trackpad, it's pretty awesome actually. If you look at it, it's like this massive trackpad, which is 
flagship grade and it's almost as big as the one on the MacBook Pro. So while the touch response and the trackpad response, all of that was great, you've also got some gesture controls on it. So on this glass trackpad, if you swipe up and down on the right, you can adjust the brightness and on the left, you can adjust the volume. And at the top, you've got playback controls for when you're say watching YouTube videos, you can like fast forward and go back as well, which is pretty cool. It might feel like a gimmick when you're hearing about it, but when we used it, we got so used to it that now we don't want trackpads without these gestures. All right, finally, it's time to talk about that Ryzen 9 AI HX 370 and of course the performance. But before that, let's take a look at the specs. So this processor has 12 cores and 24 threads and can go up to 5.1 gigahertz. It also ships with the XDNA2 NPU, which has a rating of 50 tops. For graphics, you've got the Radeon 890M GPU. As for the RAM, you get a 32 GB LPDDR5X RAM, which is tuned at 7,500 megahertz. And you also get a PCI Express 4 1 TB SSD as well. By the way, one thing to note is that if you do buy this laptop, this SSD is upgradable up to 2 TB, but we would suggest that you actually take it to the ASUS service center to do it. In fact, it's not just us suggesting it, ASUS themselves suggest that don't do it yourself unless you want to end up, you know, breaking it because that happens. You also get Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4 and a 78 watt hour battery with a 65 watt charging support with the charger inside the box, mind you. And that can charger is tiny. Huh? You can use it to charge your phones as well if they have USB PD support. All right, so now it's time to talk about the synthetic benchmarks. Let's start with Cinebench R24 and Geekbench 6. So in multi-core scores, it actually beats the M3 and it's very close to the Snapdragon X Elite, but it falls short in single core scores. It also performed well in 3D Mark. We actually ran the Time Spy and the Nomad and Nomad Lite tests as well. But what we notice is that while testing the 12 Zen 5 cores that are there in the laptop, they actually reached a peak of 95 degrees Celsius. And this behavior actually is very similar to what we noticed with the Zen 4 desktop AMD chips. So basically the top half of the laptop would actually get you know, hot during benchmarking. But interestingly, it also cooled down very fast because it's got a cooling system inside despite having a thin chassis. So you've got dual fans and heat pipes for faster dissipation and it actually did dissipate faster. Also, this heating problem that we noticed is only during benchmarking and in regular usage, it runs entirely cool. So we were pushing it, that's why it was getting hot. And the best part is that it's been tuned in such a way that there is no thermal throttling at all. Now, if you want to push it for performance, laptop will give you that room but it will also get hot. So keep that in mind. By the way, the official operating TDP of this laptop is 28 watts. And in our testing, we noticed that it went up to 33 watts. So like I said, in daily usage, how many ever Chrome tabs you have open doing whatever you want to, it doesn't actually get very hot. And to test it even further, we actually switched to the Whisper fan mode from the Maya ASUS app to see if the system gets hotter when the fans are entirely switched off. But it didn't in daily usage. It doesn't. So which is fantastic. Also, the good thing to note is that when you're not plugged in, there's only a 5 to 10% performance hit, which is very evident from the graphs that you can see here. So up until now on x86 based Windows machines, we haven't seen such performance and good job Asus and AMD. Now see, this is a thin and light machine mainly meant for productivity on the go and gaming is not something that Asus really wants to talk about either, obviously, but we still tried out some games if you want to. In GTA 5 at medium settings, we were getting above 60 FPS, which is pretty decent. And in Valorant, which defaults to low settings, we got about 250 to 300 FPS, which is not too bad either. Also note that the Windows 11 24H2 update is uh, supposed to improve the performance of Zen 5 CPUs. So stay tuned for that. Now with all of the performance gains and efficiency, the battery life is something that has been fantastic in our testing of this machine. Especially on an x86 platform, most laptops up until now would promise about what, 9, 11, at best 14 hours, but this one, Asus promises 18 hours. Of course, that's an ideal usage and Asus's own simulated testing scenarios, but in our testing as well, we got 11 hours of battery life, which is fantastic. And in moderate usage, in daily usage, you can expect 11 to 12 hours easily. Also, it's always a joy to see a laptop lose just about one to 2% of battery life in about 30 minutes of, you know, Windows setting up, which generally doesn't happen. Also, thanks to the fact that this is x86, there is no app compatibility or software compatibility issues like you have on ARM right now. Because Windows on x86, everything works, right? Now, this is also the first laptop chip from AMD that will support AI features because of the 50 tops of power that it has. So right now, it doesn't have the Windows Copilot Plus certification, but Asus tells us that it's coming soon. So features like live captions, co-creator and recall 
the controversial one when it becomes live will also be supported on this machine. Now, obviously, we haven't tested the AI features because they're not available right now, but we did uh, run Geekbench AI and this is what the numbers look like. Also, you can try using the NPU with the StoryCube app that has been made by ASUS itself. So it uses AI to categorize your photos and videos. And this thing won't even sweat, it'll work absolutely fine. All right, so all in all, what I want to say is that this laptop is Windows on ARMS and MacBook on ARMS biggest rival right now. The way Asus and AMD have managed to pull off great performance without, uh, you know, affecting efficiency, basically giving you great battery life is genuinely commendable. Remember how I'd said I'm bullish on ARM? Now, if x86 starts performing like this, well, that makes things even more confusing. Which one to choose? But as a consumer, you've got choice, more choice. The positives outweigh the negatives and you genuinely can pick whatever you like. All right, talking about the pricing of the ZenBook S16 OLED, it's priced at about 1.5 lakhs. And I think for what it offers, it's pretty decent. And it has a capability to compete with some pro devices in this category. You know which one I'm talking about. I was genuinely eager to test out the Ryzen AI9 HX370 and truth be told, it's been a good experience. So what do you guys think of the new ZenBook S16 OLED? And what do you think of the direction in which ARM and x86 and Windows are heading? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.